Welcome back to Block TV time for Cryptonomics, where we talk about pressing issues in the crypto and blockchain sphere. And joining us today from Paris is Ethan Pierce, director of Crypto Assets Institute. Mr. Pierce is also the founding partner of Borderless Ventures, focused on French tech and startups, and the author of the upcoming security token offerings, tokenized securities and the future of investment. Welcome, Ethan. Thank you so much for being with us today um, uh, yes. from, <laughs> from lovely Paris. Question to you, because I think your book title says it all. Um, but yeah. I, I know, but I'm going to play devil's advocate. Does everything really have to be tokenized? So, no, I mean, I don't think that you, I think there's been a big rush to, by people who are very um, uh, excited about where this could go and for lots of many reasons to try and think that blockchain is the future of everything, that everything needs a token. But I think what's interesting is that uh, when we talk about a little bit later, when we talk about tokenized securities and, and why security tokens are, are getting so many people excited, I think the uh, a big part of that is, is it's not really a startup conversation. It becomes a small business conversation. It becomes real estate uh, conversation, uh, intellectual property like like patents and music and film and art and, and so many other things. And it's actually people from those um, areas that are getting extremely excited about uh, what could potentially be done with tokenized securities because they're looking at, at two things that they'd love to see happen. Uh, they'd love to see fractional ownership and they would love to see increased uh, liquidity. Um, we'll talk about both of those, I think, later on, but that's why uh, I think there are tremendous reasons why many things are going to be tokenized in some way, uh, but I don't believe that it is obviously... That uh, is necessary uh, for everything and anything. Um, no. Let me ask you this, though, then. Um, you seem to be quite behind security tokens, but what do you think is... Let's begin with that. What do you think the next step for tokenization is? So I think uh, if we look at ICOs, the idea of utility tokens, um, mostly as a tool to raise uh, funding, I think everybody is in agreement that that's pretty much dead, yep. uh, at least for now. Um, I think if it comes back, it will come back because of um, the ability to use a token immediately in uh, the ecosystem of a project and not about future utility. In fact, the SEC just, just I think last week published something on the fact that you know they, they would agree that if a token is usable immediately, uh, it is not necessarily a security. But any of these ideas where you're, you're, you're saying, here's what my token will do, and then once the ecosystem is done or the application is done next week, next year, or whenever, uh, you'll be able to use it. That's just speculation. People are going to buy it. The value is going to go up and down, and it, it becomes a security. So I think the ICO conversation is, on, in terms of tokenization is, is already kind of dead. Uh, I think if we look at security tokens, however, what's, what's really interesting is uh, the next steps are we need to issue the tokens and so for example um we, there's lots of platforms in the us and around the world that have begun issuing on uh, different kinds of tokenized securities uh, that's the first step that we're able to get past with the regulators now if we look at uh the second step which is the secondary market being able to exchange these tokens in order to have liquidity that's a little bit harder in terms of the uh, regulatory issues that we're trying to solve, but but that's pretty much fixed in some of the ways that we're working on it. it we just have to kind of get everything right. But the depending on on the jurisdiction, but the real issue is that uh, most of the security token space. It, you know, I'm not talking about the startups, but like I talked about earlier with small businesses or other or other business models are actually about revenue sharing. And, and so if we're talking about a revenue share security token, if you're buying that just to flip it, if you're buying it to unload it within the next three, six or nine months, then you kind of don't understand what you're doing. You kind of miss the point because if you're not going to get the revenue share out of the token every quarter, then then that was kind of the, the, the reason why that token was put into place. And, and, so I believe, no, no, go ahead, be go ahead. My question to you, sorry, I've stopped you there, but my question to you is one of the claims, you know, you're, you're speaking about all of this as if, you know, people will jump on board apropos security tokens. And one of the claims made by many critics, okay, and that's, that's one of the things that I want to ask you where we stand right now, is that the market right. itself, you know, there's not enough mass adoption, there's not enough use cases, the whole thing is not ready yet, be it for, you know, the security tokenization level of it or the one step forward. Would you, you know, what would you say to critics as such? So I think the, I think it's, funny to be criticizing that security tokens aren't viable because the ecosystem doesn't exist yet for something that that is brand new. Uh, I think obviously we have to 
create pilot projects that make this work for different for all the different business models and all the different jurisdictions. I think we see plenty of examples. So with Desico, uh, which is um, exactly, I mean, give me some examples of user uh, of user cases. So you know, yeah. in that respect. Well, with Desico, uh, which is a startup I was advising last year that I uh, ended up joining as a late founder, uh, is a Lithuanian company that working with the government created a legal framework to issue security tokens um, that is EU compliant. So this, as, as an EU member state, this works across the EU uh, uh, fantastically in terms of the regulatory issues. And the big secret sauce of that that's really interesting is, is most security tokens are unavailable to retail or normal, you know, non-accredited, non-institutional investors because of the regulatory issues. Right. Uh, and what we built actually with Desico, uh, with the government and with the central bank, is this idea that up to 5 million euros per year per project can come into a security token offering from non-accredited investors. And uh, that's gonna change a lot because when we look at small businesses and many of these other business models interested in security tokens, they're actually looking to raise two to $10 million. Uh, maybe if they go above that even, that's fine. But but the idea of 50 to 100 million isn't, isn't where most of these things are looking. So two to 10 million, two to 20 million, Five million of that from your community, from retail investors, is actually very, very useful. We did uh, our uh, security token offering. It was the first in Lithuania in November. Uh, we put a million euros of the token offering out there, and um, it was a success. Uh, it was also a, a way to test the system and to make sure everything worked with the regulator. Now, as far as moving forward, we will have um, two projects launching in March, um, April, uh, first kind of client projects in order to continue to test the platform uh, and make sure that everything works the way the regulator wants it to. And we will keep ramping that up every month with more and more projects. I've spoken to over 500 projects since uh, I'd say about the last six, seven months that are you know from around the world that are looking to do a security token in a revenue share model. Uh, the interest is there. So yes, do we have thousands of them happening? No, but you don't get to 1000 until you start with one or two and then you get 10 and then you get 20 and then you get 100. So I think that lots of amazing companies like in the US, you've got fantastic platforms like, like um, uh, uh, let's see, well, you've got Republic, you've got Securitize, you've got uh, CoinList, you've got Tokensoft, you've got all these companies doing really cool things in the security token space and advancing on the subject very well. So we're getting there piece by piece. So STO is the future. Well, I think what's interesting is if we were to look at the ability for, so let, let's, let's look at um, uh, a couple really short use cases. Imagine that you're a, a small, um, medium-sized business. You're, you're a consultancy, let's say in Lyon in France. Uh, you make, uh, you have $10 million in annual revenue. You need $2 million of capital in order to scale up operations to potentially hit 15 to 20 million um, in revenue. Uh, for whatever reason, because there's plenty of reasons, you're not able to get that through the bank or traditional channels. But if you reach out to your economic community, your clients, the, the local economic um, actors, uh, uh, potentially governments, um, all the people who could be interested in seeing your company scale, uh, $2 million is not necessarily a, a huge target to hit uh, if you already have that kind of a, a, an economic community around you. That is a way for us to drive the small business sector forward without dealing with historically banks, and without dealing with an equity investment idea. This is a revenue share model based on a company that's already revenue positive and healthy. Uh, there's an example there. Uh, imagine um, uh, who wouldn't want to own some Avengers tokens or some Harry Potter tokens or a Mona Lisa token. Um, even if you weren't interested in the financial returns, you're just interested in it because it's culturally something you care about. Right. But there's Harry Potter, the, the first film, makes as much money now as it, you know, as as it did, uh, uh, pretty much since the beginning. Like the, these movies, through syndication and being pushed back out, and through uh, streaming and everything else, uh, are, create tremendous amount of revenue for these franchises. Music is the same thing. Um, right. uh, and so I think that there's tremendous ways that we're going to see security tokens as a way to. to gain new capital from new sources, democratize where that capital comes from, um, and push small businesses and other business models forward. Aren't you, and, I mean, clearly you're, uh, the answer to that you, would be yes, that you think that SDOs <laughs> are the future, uh, but thank you for the breakdown. Um, and again, you know, I'll bounce it back to you. Aren't, you know, isn't there such a thing as too many tokens? Well, so here's the thing. Um, if we're talking about security tokens, the token is irrelevant. It's just a tool uh, in the sense of um, you're not going to be out there looking for. So let's let's go back and, and look at this um, uh, this consultancy idea. Maybe it's a, 
um, an architectural firm in Lyon. Uh, nobody's going to go looking for that in terms of the token um, and necessarily care uh, uh, in terms of a, a an unknown way. But if you know about that business or you're interested in those kind of firms or you're interested in that specific geography, you'll go looking for, the, for it. So go looking on a stock exchange and look at the sheer volume of stocks that you can get access to. And why do people buy uh, into certain stock positions versus others? I think that, that the ability to have tens upon tens of thousands, if not even hundreds of thousands of these things is possible simply because they're in the security token space. It's not about um, the token itself being known. It's about the fact that that is the way to establish the contract between the investors and the business model. Right. And so I think uh, I think that's incredibly important to think about. So I, I think it's not about people going, oh, yeah, did you buy some Ethereum? Did you buy some Bitcoin? Did you buy some Litecoin? Do you have some Ripple? I think this is, nobody's going to be out there saying, hey, do you have some of that coin from that architectural uh, consultancy in Lyon, France? But if you're <laughs> interested in that business, if you're interested in that model or that region, then that might be a smart investment uh, for placing your capital. Okay. Uh, and I think that that is, is where we can see a lot of this going. So, yes, we don't need more tokens for tokens sake. But what if they're simply the contractual way that we are enabling these investments into these business models? Ethan Pierce joining us from Paris today. Thank you so much for shedding light on that um, uh, and for speaking with us. That would be it for us today when it comes to Crypto Globe. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back and check us out on every social platform you have. Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, Block TV. We're out there. Thank you.